And if you're talking about the best Star Wars film, I think it's got to be Empire Strikes Back. Do you hear that? The Comics Academy alert. It can only mean one thing. Holy bat signal! Time to go into action. To the bat pulse! Hey, it's time for the next episode of Comics Academy. I'm John Gallagher, cartoonist, and behind the camera is my good cameraman and son, Will, who's super excited to be here, right? Say hi, Will. Hello. Okay, anyway, in this episode of Comics Academy, we're gonna, again, use simple shapes to create a cool drawing. In this case, we're drawing Mindy Microbe, who is Max Meow's best friend and a super scientist in Kittyopolis. So, we're using simple shapes, including the circle. This time we're gonna add a squiggle, maybe some rectangles or square shapes. And finally, we've got some sort of loopy, bouncy shapes. That'll be used for both hair and for the hands. So today's a day that we're gonna actually use a pencil or some underdrawing to create Mindy Micro because she's a little more complex. If you remember, when we draw Max Meow, we start with just a big oval. But if we go into drawing Mindy, we're gonna start with a couple circles. So the first circle I draw is a very simple circle and then another circle, just a little bit down below. Um, and this is going to be Mindy's head. So, now, uh, if you remember, I was talking about the salt shaker. Will, what are you laughing about? La Will's laughing behind the camera. Max Mel. Did I say Max Mel? You said Max Mel. I did not say Max yes, Mel. Yes, you did. Okay, so anyway, when I draw Max Mel, Max Meow, um, we've got Mindy here. This is the beginning of the shape. So hopefully you can see those two circles. Then we're going to just draw sort of a... Once again, if you remember the bottom of a salt shaker, I didn't really talk about that shape. Uh, and then Mindy is a scientist. She wears a science smock or coat. And then I'm just drawing the rectangles right here that will stick out as her arms. Then we've got two rectangles to be her legs. And remember those potatoes using a baked potato as her feet or squashed ovals or circles? Now this doesn't really look like anything yet, does it? But I'm just gonna add some extra things. And you can do this with pencil very lightly and then go ahead and do it darker in pencil or even use like a pen that you might have in the house. And then what you can do is go in, I can't do this with crayon, but you're gonna go in and erase the pencil that's underneath. But for now, we're just gonna focus on the inks. And remember, in comics, there's often pencils that go first they're a little more detailed than this. And then the inker goes in. It's not just tracing the lines, it's actually enhancing the lines. There's thicks and there's thins. I've worked with, especially my good friend, Rich Faber, who worked on Real Boy Red and Buzz Boy with me. He was really good at taking some of my pencils and not only enhancing those pencils, but fixing mistakes that I might make. Okay, so how does this turn into Mindy? Well, we're gonna first follow the shape of her head. Okay, did you see how I kind of followed the ovals a little bit? But I just did part of it. And this is kind of where her cheek comes out. And I'm going to put her nose, and this is going to be using the letter C, in this case, backwards. I'm going to add the C that becomes her nose. And now Mindy wears glasses. and. She wears big Harry Potter style round glasses because I think that's a really exciting way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the little connector of the glasses first. Then, and now I've practiced drawing circles a lot. So I'm pretty good at doing circles. It may take some practice for you to do them. I think they're, are they pretty round from where you are, Will? Yeah. Uh, they do look a little curved. It's part of that's because I'm drawing it while I'm, I'm trying to not cover it up. So I'll look, they're a little bit slanty, but, uh, and then for her eyes, I'm just drawing two lines or skinny, 
tall ovals. So we've got the beginning of Mindy Microbe's face. So we've got her glasses, um, and now I'm just gonna give her a smile. And I'm not making a super duper smiley face smile. I'm just giving her a little bit of a smile. I just do a line, kind of a curve, and then I'm just gonna add another curve underneath. And then look at this. I'm kind of drawing a little oval there. And what I do is I fill in around that and that kind of looks like a tongue. So if you look at the shape there, I've kind of filled it in a bit. That's one of those things you have to practice a little bit. And you can even add some little lines here to draw the edges of her mouth. Those are kind of the dimples. So we've drawn Mindy. Hmm. I don't think she's bald, so I think we'll add some hair. And remember, I talked about some squiggle lines and bumpy lines, and Mindy has very curly hair. So in this case, I'm just gonna add some squiggle lines for her hair. And she has very full hair, so I'm doing three lines. See how I'm just doing the bounce there? It's not always easy to do to make it look like hair. And in this case, when I do Mindy, her hair is always colored in brown underneath. So you could always take a crayon and color in your drawing after. So now I go in this direction and I, I'm making sure to kind of still leave the, the glasses that I don't draw over them too much. And in this case, because part of her hair is hiding, because we're looking at this from an angle, I'm not gonna make her hair super bouncy on this side as much as on this side. So now we've got Mindy. She looks, still looks a little bald, so this is one of those things where maybe you want to darken in some of the hair. You could do that. I'm just doing this really, really lightly, just to sort of show you, if you take a crayon, what it's going to look like. You don't want to just fill it in with marker, or it'll just look like a big black blob. But in this case, I'm just doing this to sort of show you. Um, so we've got Mindy's whole head here, and we've taken those oval shapes, some round shapes, the C, some squiggly shapes, and now we're gonna use those rectangles to draw uh, Mindy's jacket or smock, as it's called. So uh, I'm just going to trace the edge of the rectangle there, and I'm gonna go down this line, and again, this is almost, if you think about it, another rectangle, but I'm gonna curve the lines a little bit, because if you're trying to do uh, clothing, sometimes it's good to curve it just a little bit on the edges. It shows that these things are rounded. Like if you think about it, you look at a shirt, it's rounded on the end where the sleeve is, or a jacket. And let's see, I'm going to go down here with a line and kind of do a rounded edge there. And in this case, her, hand, her arm is behind the jacket. In this side, her arm is a little bit more in front, kind of like you notice this arm is behind my shirt. This arm, whoops, this arm is in front. So we're seeing a little bit more of the arm here. Oh, you hear the birds? A lot of people have been talking about those background sounds. Remember, I like it outside, but every now and then we have to stop for some background sounds, whether it's an, uh, an airplane or an animal or... I don't know what that is. Anyway. I'll get back to work here. So we're doing the jacket and we've, we've got that. And you know, Mindy, when she's in her science mode, she loves to wear ties. Now ties, people used to say ties were just for, for boys. Now girls and boys both wear ties because ties are something that can make you look kind of formal. And you'll notice the shape that I use there, not to get too tricky, is I just kind of created this kind of blobby shape. You can, you can make it sharper on the end, and then there's a triangle underneath, and then we just fill that in. You could also make it like a red tie, a blue tie, polka dot tie, and uh, the edge of her pants is kind of underneath that tie, so we don't see that, but we do want to draw the squares that form her legs. And she wears black pants, so I'm gonna connect that line and I'm just going to fill that in. So let me step away for a second. Her head's a little bit bigger than I usually draw her. I usually draw her head a little smaller in proportion to her body, 
but in this case, I'm exaggerating a little bit so it's easier to see. Okay, now we've got her all set except for hands and feet. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna, once again, use bumpy curls. And I'm just gonna give her three bumps. Three bumps for her fingers, because in my comics, just to, for ease of drawing and understanding, everybody has three fingers and a thumb. And on this side, we're gonna do one, two, three, and then sticking out in a different direction is her thumb. And finally, let's add, let's trace over or ink over those feet. And, uh, and we've got Mindy. Now Mindy often has uh, test tubes and bottles that she carries because she's mixing stuff into ingredients. Sometimes she's making the most fantastic ingredient in the world like flubber that bounces all over the place. Other times she's just making lemonade. So I'm just going to show you real quick. If I want to do a test tube, I am just do a straight line and then I take my line down and kind of curve it at the bottom. Remember, I like to do the letter J and then I just connect that line and maybe I add some chemicals in there. So you can actually, next another time we'll talk about holding, having characters' hands hold things. Um, so basically we've got Mindy Microbe here. She's really good friends with Max and I barely have room to sign it. I'll just sign it sideways because remember a great artist always signs your art. Uh, and in this case I signed it sideways. Um, and again, thank you to all the people that have been sending in some artwork. We're going to show some stuff at the end. Uh, I'm John Gallagher. I hope you've had fun drawing. And you can go back on YouTube or Facebook and find some of my previous Comics Academy uh, lessons. Um, I hear the end of Comics Academy alert. Will, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next time. And a special thank you to Colin A.G. for his drawing of Max Meow Cat Crusader. Thanks, Colin.